Qualifying for the British Grand Prix is over and it is yet another Red Bull pole position as Max Verstappen takes another crushing pole position, but he had to take it in a very changeable qualifying session which saw rain and then glorious sunshine. But the question is, who looked good and who did not look so good? Well, to find out, I'm going to be taking a look at the data from a hectic day of qualifying. Now, let's get into the video. As usual, I'll be talking about the Ferrari, Aston Martin, Mercedes and Red Bull later on, so stick around for that. Qualifying today was in very changeable conditions, and even though the drivers were on soft tyres for the entire of the three sessions, we saw huge amounts of track evolution as the circuit was drying out. And to see that, I have brought up the lap times of Pierre Gasly in the Alpine from the start of Q1 to the end of Q3 for him in the Alpine. As you can see, his first lap was a 133.782, and by the end, Gasly was down to a 127.689. This shows just how much the grip came up as the soft tyres found temperature and the circuit dried out, allowing them to push the cars to the limit. Let's now take a look at those two laps to see just how much faster Gasly was able to go. The white line is his first lap in Q1, and the blue trace is in Q3. As you can see, through Turn 1, his speed is far more consistent, and into Brooklands, he is up to 20 kilometers per hour faster, although that is more down to the fact he's able to use DRS. Through Maggots, Beckett's and Chapel, you can see he can carry significantly more speed, and into Stowe Corner, he doesn't even need to slow down anywhere near as much as he needed to on his first fast lap. And this would be the same for just about every driver. This shows how the circuits evolved during the session. So the question is, what teams were looking good, and what teams were not looking so good in qualifying? Well, one team that was struggling rather unsurprisingly was the Alfa Romeo team, as they seem to be all out at sea when it comes to the qualifying session. Alfa Tauri was also looking rather terrible, but we kind of come to expect that from them at this point. For Alfa Romeo though, it was another difficult day. Let's take a look at the lap times of Zhou Guan Yu and compare that to the Williams of Logan Sargent. Please note that these lap times are both from Q1 for both drivers. Sadly for Joe, it looks more like a top speed issue as he was in a very draggy Alfa Romeo and that car was no match for the Williams which has been an incredible car this weekend, especially in a straight line. But what you can see, which I find kind of surprising, Joe is actually stronger through Chapel and also on the exit of Stowe Corner and going through Vale. However, the Alfa Romeo is just so much more draggy when compared to Williams that he loses any advantage that he may have found through those corners. For Alfa Romeo, they are currently 8th in the Constructors' Championship, but I think after this weekend, they are almost certainly going to be moving down to 9th place in that championship. Speaking of Williams, they had an incredible day in qualifying and arguably could have had an even stronger day had qualifying been fully dry. But Alex Albon can be very proud of his day's work out on track, and he could have been in the running for a little bit more than where he finished. Let's take a look at the lap time of Alex Albon and compare it to the Red Bull of Max Verstappen who took pole position. Through the opening phase of the lap, you can see Albon is actually the faster driver of the two, down to how brilliant the Williams is in a straight line. Also through the entry to Maggots, he is faster, but as the corners progress, you can see just how Red Bull claws back the time due to the superior downforce. And then going through Vale, Verstappen is way faster, and he takes another pole position, but for Williams, this is a huge step forward, and tomorrow, they could score some good points, and I do think there's a possibility that both Williams drivers can finish in the top 10. Another team which had an incredible day was McLaren, as their new upgrades have revolutionized the car, and both Norris and Piastri were able to put in performances that saw both of the two drivers on the front two rows of the grid, as they beat pretty much everyone, except Max Verstappen, of course. But where did Lando lose out to Max? Well, let's take a look at both of their laps. Norris was able to get brilliant traction on the exits of corners, but sadly, as we are all too used to seeing this year, 
when the cars start to build up speed, especially with DRS, the McLaren starts to fall back as they are still a little bit too draggy, at least now when compared to Red Bull. They have definitely moved forward, but when compared to the best, you can see where they are sadly missing out. If they can just sort that out, then there's no reason why McLaren cannot seriously start considering the possibility of podiums, and tomorrow it could be tricky for them to stay in these positions, but there is certainly an opportunity for them to finish in the top five and maybe, just maybe, start to take the fight to Alpine a little bit more in the Constructors' Championship. Let's now take a look at the top four teams and let's start with Ferrari. For Ferrari, it almost feels like civil war has broken out as once again Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc are finding it difficult to continue working together. Both drivers are closely matched and are desperate to come out on top against each other and you can see that when you take a look at all of the laps between both drivers just to see how closely they were matched. Sainz was ever so slightly slower, but there was little to tell between them. Let's now take a look at their fastest laps to see where Leclerc was that ever so slightly faster than his teammates. When you look at these laps, you can see just how little there is to tell between them both as I just said. Leclerc gets a good exit off of Luffield into Woodcote, but he loses out on that advantage going into Vale, and this almost cost him position. But not only did it almost cost him a position to Sainz, it also cost him a position to the McLaren drivers. For Ferrari, they need to ensure that they can work together in the early stages, at least tomorrow, as they pick their way through the McLaren cars because they need to be wary of the Mercedes cars that are starting behind them. But if they can work together, then I think there's no reason why both Ferrari drivers can't find themselves on the podium. For Aston Martin, it was another difficult day, as the competition, it seems, have eaten into the early advantage that they had during the season. Silverstone was never going to be a great weekend for them as a team, due to that high-speed nature of the circuit. But with Alonso in P9 and Stroll in P12, that early season form seems to be starting to drift away. Let's take a look at the lap time of Alonso and compare it to the McLaren of Lando Norris to see where the time sadly drifted away. It is actually very even between the two drivers, at least in the first half of the lap. However, when it comes to the breaking point between Beckett's and Chapel, you can see that Norris was able to carry more speed through this section, and this allowed Norris to slingshot off the corner down the hangar straight, and finally going into Vale, Norris was much faster than Fernando, and this is where Alonso lost out the time. For Aston Martin, Silverstone will be a difficult race, and they just need to wait out for Budapest, which is when things should go significantly better for them as a team, in my opinion. For Mercedes, it was an improved day from a very difficult Friday, as Russell was 6th and Hamilton was 7th. But even so, that is not ideal, especially when Ferrari are closing in for second in the Constructors' Championship. Thankfully though, for Mercedes, they should be feeling good that in the race, they can potentially compete for the podium against Ferrari and the McLarens. They should have better race pace than the McLaren team, and typically they have been stronger in the race when compared to Ferrari. Let's now take a look at the fastest lap of George Russell and compare it to Piastri. Once again, it seems like the McLaren has incredible pace in Sector 3, and this is where they made up all of the time as Piastri again gets a better exit from Chapel and uses that to his advantage down the straight and again was able to carry more speed into Vale. For Mercedes, they will be scratching their heads as to why they are still struggling against customer teams. At the beginning of the year, it was Aston Martin, and now, seemingly, it is the McLaren team that have got the jump on the Mercedes team. And for Red Bull, it was yet another race weekend where it was a tale of two halves, as Max Verstappen takes pole position, but Sergio Perez's dismal qualifying record continues, and actually finds a way to make it worse as Perez went out in Q1. But how was this possible? Well, let's take a look at the Q1 lap times of Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez. In this, you can see Verstappen is just about faster everywhere, as he had better traction at the beginning of the lap. Through Magus and Beckett's, he can carry way more speed, and he gets better traction at Club Corner. 
For Perez, qualifying was another disastrous day and he will find his day being all about recovering to points. For Max though, he just needs to make sure that he can get a good clean start off of the line and if he manages that, then it will be another simple victory for the Dutch driver. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, as always, comment, leave a like and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.